very good. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, it's a little boy, is it? Well, I think so. At this age, it's very hard to, with pigeons, it's hard to get the right sex. But I think it's, sometimes he acts like a boy, sometimes he acts like a girl. So, Navid, you, you've got a, a, a big pine shop in Fairham. So, why have you got a pigeon? Well, since I was five years old, the first pigeon my grandma gave it to me as a pet and a toy to keep me happy. And from there on, it just grew, and I ended up having 100 in Iran. Now I've got 40 here. I've got 40 pigeons at home. Yeah, I breed them, I fly them, I enjoy them. I used to race, but the time being at work didn't allow me to continue, so I kept high flyers. They are Persian bred, tumbling high flyers. Wow, is that what they're called? Yeah, they're yeah. high flying tumblers. High flying tumblers, okay. From, from Iran. Oh, and how do the customers like them? Oh, like, they love them. Yeah. You get occasional persons saying, oh my God, there's a bird in here. I don't like them flapping, so I'll put them away in the back. Otherwise, majority, 99% love it. They come in, they can't believe it. Some, some of them say, is that a parrot? <laughs> no, it's a carrot. <laughs> You're not worried about him escaping? No, he doesn't. He follows me everywhere. Yeah. I'll take him outside on the seafront. He follows me on my shoulder. But if he flies off, he goes round and round and he comes straight back on my shoulder. In the time you've been in business, have you always had a bird on your arm? Always had a bird. <laughs> Many kind, but this one's... Uh, I used to have a parrot as well in, in Portsmouth. Yep. It was very famous, Malcolm the parrot, and everybody knew that bird. Um, eventually, I had to give it away. Oh. Um, then I thought, no, I hand read a pigeon. So uh, this is the fourth one. So, it's so you must be the only only trader in Fairham that's got a, a pigeon. I think so. <laughs> it's unique. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> and do a lot of people know that and come in and see the pigeon? Uh, some people do come in just to see the pigeon. I've got an old lady coming who actually named the pigeon Peter when it was in a box small. She used to come in here. She come, She might come in today. She comes. She used to come every day, stroke the bird and say, I'm going to call it Peter. I said, OK. So it's Peter the Pigeon. Peter the Pigeon from Fairham. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. You're good, aren't you? So, you're quite confident this little Peter is going to show us what it's all about. Well, this Peter, when I park my van at the back, I don't have to carry him. He knows where the shop is. He comes from the van straight to the front door. We race to the door, actually. I run and he follows me flying. And uh, he gets to the door quicker than me, but he hovers around until I get there. He sits on my shoulder. Yeah. Sometimes he sits on that cinema sign outside, wait for me to open the door. But it sticks to me. Most of the Brilliant. Time. So tell me, what is, what is the secret about training a pigeon like this? Well, there's two ways. Uh, you either train them with food, but they only come to you because of food. I train them food and love. They come to me because they pair up to me, actually. They, if it's a cockbird, he thinks I'm a hen. If it's a hen, he thinks I'm a cockbird. So he follows me everywhere because he does love me. and. This is the way. Then it doesn't matter whether I feed him or not, he comes to me because he wants to be with me. Just love, love and affection, and they give it back to you by pecking your ear when they're sitting on your shoulder <laughs> or go through your hair and try and like do what they do with other pigeons, you know, you got rummage through the feathers. And he does it through my hair. And he comes home with me, he's with me all the time, he comes delivering with me to customers and sits in the van waiting and what has happened is I don't want him to sit on the seat so when I go in the van I, have to, I put him on the floor so when I get out he knows I'm out he jumps and sits on the steering wheel Peter likes millets yep. which is a small seed he, that prefer, his preference obviously he drinks water but he loves my tea every time I make a tea he's on my shoulder begging for some of the tea but normally he put his big in when it's hot and he goes oh <laughs> so i say wait until it cools down and uh, look at that it's in my tea oh <laughs> copy that do you want some oh my god don't drink all of it 
Oh, that's enough. Oi! Whoa. Well, that's nice. Gives you a splash after a while. That was good, wasn't it? Oi! Stop it. Do you want some more? Oh, we had a stomach full now. He loves tea. <laughs> I think he likes the sugar, I think, in the tea or the caffeine. Is that enough? Do you want some more? Yes. Oh my God. Some more. He doesn't make a little mess, but it's better than a dog big pile. Well, I mean, would you just wipe it off? Oh, you just wipe it off. And it brings you good luck anyway. It's good luck. I get good luck all day. <laughs> <laughs>